Hey everyone, Scott here. So today I'm talking about Loom Cubes. And if you've only got 10 seconds to watch this video, I recommend Loom Cubes. Really like them, have been enjoying them. I like them so much I reached out to Loom Cube to find out about becoming an affiliate. So if uh, you are thinking about getting a pair, you watch this video, you're liking uh, what you see, I'd appreciate if you use the link that I have beneath the video. It doesn't cost you anything extra, helps me out a little bit. So, so what are these things? Well, Loom Cubes are, in a nutshell, really just incredibly durable, compact, very bright, remotely controlled lights. And uh, I, when I first got my set, I made sure to record the initial thoughts as I took them out of the box. They're built like a tank. I mean, I'm really squeezing this thing with all my might. It's not going anywhere. Metal casing, really strong. And if I had any type of complaint about this is that this little uh, screw that we use to access the USB port to recharge it. You know, it's a waterproof seal, so it's got a little bit of rubber coating on it. You squeeze it down when it tightens up. Is this little pin is, uh, it's, it's not captive. So it separates from the cube. And I can see myself losing that. If I'm going from one location to another, I want to charge the cubes up while I'm driving there. And I take this thing off and then I can't find it when I want to go put it back on. Maybe they sell them by the truckload. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I'm really impressed with the construction. It's solid. It's got a little mount so I can put it up on uh, you know, a tripod or you know, a stick or anything that has a quarter inch uh, you know, standard uh, screw-in mount. So yeah, these, um, these things are really cool. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm eager to get these in the field and test them out. Right, pairing it was really simple. The only trick I would say is doing it with the Loom Cube app, not like you would do your Bluetooth for a speaker or uh, you know your car or you know, your pods or anything like that. All on, all off. This is nice. Yeah, so there's there's number one. There's number two. And I can really see how I'll be able to use these, you know, stick them out somewhere in the in the field and um, dial them in. I've got a few ideas of how I'm going to use these already. And so how do I plan on using these fellas? Uh, well, the, the obvious one is it's a flashlight, right? You know, it's, it's smaller than my current pocket flashlight, and it's a heck of a lot more powerful. And so uh, the very first field test I did was using them to help me snap focus when I'm in very low light conditions. I'm trying out the Loom cubes here, and I'm using it just, here's the, here's the cube, shining it out on the rocks there. Otherwise, if I click that away, you know, it is just dark. There's nothing there for the camera to snap onto. I do this, and then I am able to capture focus with the camera. I've done that already. I've snapped focus, switched over to manual, and now I can turn off the lights. I can control that from my smartphone, and uh, I can take a super duper long exposure when the wave comes up. So I'm gonna give that a shot now. I'm gonna turn down the lights. So I've got the one in my hand. I'll make that go away. I've got a second light just off to the side, so I can kind of keep seeing what I'm doing. I'll dim that now so that I'm doing nothing but just capturing ambient light. So before I had the Loom Cubes, I would actually physically need to walk the flashlight out into the scene sometimes, place it on a rock somewhere, go back to the camera, snap focus on it, then go retrieve the flashlight and you know, turn it off and then take my photos. Uh, well, now that these put out a lot more power than what I had in my flashlight, I'm able to do a lot of that from right behind the camera. Just turn it on, shine the light, snap focus, turn it off. And I haven't had to do this yet, but if I need to, if I walk one of the cubes out into the scene, you know, place it down somewhere, I've got the smartphone app. I can control the light, turn it on, turn it off, without having to constantly go back and forth out of the scenes. I need to recompose something, you know, pop the light back on, recompose, snap focus, turn it off. So this is uh, much easier. It's been much easier to work with Loom Cubes as a, uh, as a helper to snap focus in low light. The second field test is a remote light painting. So leveraging the smartphone app. I took two cubes, put them at the base of a tree in one of the nice parks here in San Diego, and you know, just had them uh, relatively dim, lit for a few seconds, and then remotely with the smartphone app, turned them off and let the camera do a finished long exposure. It took a little bit of experimentation. I found I really had to have the, the power on the Loom Cubes very low because they will throw out a lot of light if they're super strong. But I was really happy with the result. I actually was really surprised. I wasn't uh, sure how this was going to look and mainly that's because I don't do a lot of light painting. Uh, but I, the one photo I came away with I was really happy with, I'll show it to you here, that uh, it just looked um, it looked nice and um, I'm cautiously optimistic there's going to be some other opportunities with 
light painting and even playing, you know, one cube off of another, or if I end up getting a few more, um, you know, doing some more interesting lighting setups for subject studies in, uh, you know, low light or after dark conditions. You know, so what's next for these things? Uh, well, certainly I want to do more light painting and I'm thinking even um, I could just get even colored transparencies, if not gels to put over the fronts to, you know, to change the, the color palette of the lights that get thrown up on things. Uh, since they are two different lights, I can have two different colors. I can control them differently. Yeah, that, that's, um, that's opening up some interesting opportunities there and being able to do it remotely. Um, so I'm not having to, you know, walk around, walk through a scene. Um, that I, I like that. I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm lazy or maybe I just don't want to have to do any type of, you know, cloning work for ghosting or things like that. Uh, so I also want to drop these into some tide pools. So I'm going to need to wait on that one a little bit. I need to get a, uh, the tide conditions to be right. Get a really good low tide, you know, zero or below sea level tide uh, with coinciding with sunset uh, or maybe sunrise. But either way, I get that nice mix of artificial light inside one of the tide pools and then the ambient light at sunrise or sunset. I think that could be a very interesting photo as well. At a minimum, they're in my bag all the time now. Uh, they're, they're great handy flashlights, you know, very powerful, uh, nice and compact, rechargeable. So again, if you're thinking of picking them up, I'd appreciate if you hit the link that I have in the show notes. Again, it won't cost you anything extra. Uh, but you know, again, I like them so much. Uh, I, I reached out to Loomcube and said, "You know what? You know what can I do? How can I become an affiliate?" Because I, I think it's a great product, and uh, it's um, it's something I'm I'm eager to find more ways to incorporate in my photography. So you got ideas? If you know, any of you folks are doing things with lighting, um, I'm I'm new to this world. I mean, you know, adding adding artificial lighting into my photos. I'm interested to hear what ideas you have or what you've done in the past. So please share that in the comments. And uh, that's it for today's vlog. Thanks again very much. Uh, happy shooting. See you next time.